Welcome to Setlist Maker. This video matches version 5.0 for iOS and version 2.0 for Android. So if you're using a later version, some pieces might work differently than what you see here. I'll try to note those changes in the video description below, so you might want to check that before continuing. When you first launch Setlist Maker, you'll see a sample database that contains some basic data for you to experiment with. But you can also create your own databases, so let's just go ahead and create a new database now. Tap the Add button at the top of the database list and enter a name. You can select a few locale settings here, then tap the Continue button. Now the left column shows the main menu for the new database, and the right column shows more settings. We'll ignore those for now. You can tap the Back button in the upper left corner to go back to the list of databases and see your new database there. Let's select it again and select Songs, and we see that the Songs list is empty. Then we can go back to the main menu and tap Shows, and it's also empty, but this is the basic navigation. Select an item in the left column to open it, or use the Back button in the upper left corner to go back. We want to add some new songs, but first let's go to Settings and tap Tags, and then tap the Add button at the top of this list. You can use tags to organize your songs in different ways. I like to use them to track the energy level of a song, so I can take that into account when building a set list. So let's add a tag called Energetic, and let's enter one into the Sort Order field. Then tap the Add button to add another tag, and your first tag gets auto-saved. For the second tag, we'll call it Average, and enter a sort order of two. Then tap the Add button and enter one more tag called Mellow, with a sort order of three. Now let's go back to the main menu and tap Songs, and we'll add a few songs. Tap the Add button and you'll see that the page for adding songs has a lot more fields on it. The only thing you have to enter is the title, but we'll enter a few more things so you can see how they work. Under the Title and Artist is a Tags button, and when we tap that we see the list of tags we created a moment ago. Let's select the Energetic tag for this song. Below that is a color, which will appear when displaying the song. This is just another way to organize songs. I like to use colors to show which songs are new or need practice. Let's set this song to orange. Below that, we can enter a key and other details. Let's also enter a duration, which doesn't have to be exact, but we can use this to calculate the length of a show. Further down, we can attach documents, recordings, or MIDI presets to the song. The Setlist Maker website has separate tutorials on each of these three features. And below that, we can enter lyrics and chords. The website also has a tutorial on this feature, but very simply, let's go ahead and enter a few lines of lyrics now. When we're done, we can tap the Add button to add another song. So let's do Fishing in the Dark, Color Yellow, Tag Average, Key of G, Duration 3.5 minutes, and some lyrics. And let's add one more song, Caveman Blues. We'll leave the color at the default. Tag, Mellow, Key of A, Duration, Four Minutes, and some lyrics. These song pages have lots of info included by default, but if you want to save some other info about each song, you can add your own custom fields to this page. Let's go back to the main menu and tap Settings and Custom Fields and tap the Add button. In one of my bands, we have three different singers, so it's nice to include a field where I can save the singer's name. So I'll enter Singer as the name of this field and then go back to the Songs list. Now to edit an existing song, I can just tap its name and the edit page appears. Except now, just below the artist field, I see the new singer field that I added, and I can enter a value there. To update the singer field in the other songs, I can just tap the next song, enter a value, and so on.
Now that we have some songs, we can put them together into a set list. Let's go back to the main menu and tap Shows, and by now you should know that you can tap the Add button at the top of this list to add a new show. The Show menu appears, and since this is a new show, the only thing we can do with it so far is edit its details. So we'll tap that button, and the Edit page appears on the right. Just like songs, the name is the only required field. If this is a real show that happens on a particular date, you can enter the date and time for the show. But sometimes you just want to make a general set list that you can reuse many times. In that case, you can leave the date and time empty. You can enter the pay that you're expecting for the show to remember that. For this show, let's say we're getting $200 plus a free drink per set. It's nice to remember those details when you get to the gig. After filling in these basic fields, we can tap Continue and a few more fields appear. For this show, let's plan on taking 15 minute breaks and 10 seconds between songs, so we can enter that here, and then Setlist Maker can calculate the length of the show for us. When we tapped Continue, a couple more buttons on the left became active, so now we can tap Edit Songs to see the setlist for this show. The list is currently empty, but we can tap the Add Songs button to show a list of all the songs in our database. We only have three so far, but let's go ahead and select all three, then tap Save. Now the songs appear in the set list, and we can drag and drop them to put them in whatever order we want. Normally we'd have at least one break in our show, so let's tap the Add Break button, and now we see headings for each of the two sets. We can now drag and drop the songs from one set to another. Since we entered a duration for each song, as well as durations for our breaks and the time between songs, you can see that as we edit the setlist, Setlist Maker displays the length of each set and the length of the entire show in the top toolbar. When we're done editing the list of songs, let's tap Edit Songs again to refresh the display, and that activates the other buttons in the left column in the section labeled Layouts. These are different ways that you can view the songs in your show, and they allow you to optimize your screen layout for different situations, like rehearsing versus performing. The app comes with a default set of layouts, but you can customize these or add your own. The Setlist Maker website has a separate tutorial showing how to do this. For now, let's select a split view layout, and this shows your setlist on the left and the details for the selected song on the right. Let's go back and compare this to the song only layout, which has a song list that disappears when you select a song, leaving more room for the song details. You can change songs by swiping horizontally, or tap the Song List button to show the list again. We also have a List Only layout, which only shows a list of songs for people who don't need to read lyrics off the screen. If we want to make any changes to the show, we can simply tap the Edit Details or Edit Songs buttons again from the Show menu. And to select a different show, we can tap the back button one more time to see the list of shows. Now let's view a show again and look at some of the functions available here. When you select a song, you can see the lyrics displaying, along with buttons to access several features related to the song. We haven't enabled most of these features, so the buttons are disabled. For the lyrics, we can easily resize them to fit nicely on the screen by pinching in or out. Generally, you'd want to resize the lyrics so that each line fits on the screen. This might mean you have to add some line breaks to the lyrics to make the lines wrap better. When we're done resizing, we can tap the Tools button on this Lyrics Viewer and tap Save Text Size. If you see that you need to edit the lyrics or anything else about a song, you could navigate back to the Songs list, but you can also use a shortcut here in the Show View. In the bottom toolbar on the far left, you have an Edit button, which opens the Song Edit page in a pop-up window. Another shortcut is the Quick Add button next to the Edit button. This opens a list of all your songs, and if you select one, it is added to your set list after the currently selected song. This saves a trip back to the Edit Songs page and is useful if you want to vary your set list during a performance. However, when you're building or editing your set list before a performance, it's better to go back to the Edit Songs page so you can add multiple songs and change their sequence. The last item in the Show menu is the Share button, which you can use to output the set list for this show. First, you can adjust the display of your set list using the settings on the left, and you'll see your settings applied to the preview on the right. 
When the list looks the way you want it to, you can tap the buttons on the bottom right to copy it to your clipboard, email it to your bandmates, print a hard copy, or open a PDF version of the setlist in another app. If your bandmates also use Setlist Maker, a better option is to set up database syncing between your devices. Then any songs or shows you create will automatically appear on all your bandmates' devices. The website has a tutorial on that feature. But this share window is useful for sharing the setlist with people who don't have Setlist Maker, or if you just want to print a hard copy rather than bringing your device on stage. Okay, that's the core functionality of Setlist Maker. Over the years, a lot more features have been added, way too much to get into here. You can navigate back to the settings and look through all the different settings pages to get some ideas about other things that the app can do. Or you can explore the tutorials section of the Setlist Maker website to learn about more advanced features. The help menu in the top toolbar has a link to the tutorials. The help menu also has a button to request tech support, which links to my help desk website. This is the best and most efficient way to report a problem, ask for help, or send a feature request. This tutorial should get you off to a good start, but if you get stuck, just use that help button to contact me. Cheers!